Welcome, folks. Chris Garlock here with Michael Redman for our latest AlphaGo versus AlphaGo game number 40. We're going to talk all about it in just a second. Uh, but first, we've got to talk about what's going on. Uh, first of all, Michael, how are you doing uh, with the uh, coronavirus uh, over there in Tokyo? I've been staying at home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Learning to edit videos. <laughs> it's, it's, it's no problem for Go players to self-isolate, right? I mean, it's really like no big deal. Oh, well, you know, um, oh, oh, anything I can call business has is, is been stopped <laughs> for months. And so I've been just staying home. Um, like teaching Go is a pretty face-to-face -face business usually. Yeah. yeah. So there's none of that for months now. Um, so I'm not doing so well as far as revenue is concerned, but I'm staying home and I'm safe. Okay, that's that's the most important thing is that you're safe. We're going to talk about uh, your new YouTube channel in just a second, but before we finish uh, on the coronavirus, uh, one of the things I was curious about, uh, to your point about the face to face, what is happening with tournaments? Well, you know, they uh, have not officially stopped the tournaments, and in Japan, they're still playing face to face. Wow. Uh, I'm told that they're spacing the games apart so people have more room and they have um, the windows open and stuff like that. But um, it is very worrying. Um, and I think that uh, the news says that Tokyo is maybe a few days away from a state of emergency uh, that will be declared. So uh, you're talking about like like what we have here uh, in, in many places, not not the entire country in the U.S., but many many places, including I'm here in, in Washington and you know D.C., Maryland, Virginia. We're all uh, in basically Locked don't down, right? don't yeah. don't don't leave the house unless right. you're going shopping. Essentially, uh, I'm um, surprised that Tokyo is not there. I thought you would have been there already. Well, you know they had a lower number um, of people who were contagious that they knew of. And at this point, apparently the hospitals still have um, a little bit of room before they um, go overloaded. And so it was a question of basically when, because Tokyo is getting more and more people each day and it's going mm -hmm. on a curve. It's, um, I think you call them an exponential curve or something like that. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. curve that is curving up and the number of people each day is going up of, wow. of new um, con contagious people. And so it is a problem. And what the news says, well, the mayor of Tokyo has been asking for it for, um, for a while now, for several days at least. Okay. Um, and I think the, the government is going to make a decision. They're saying that the government is going to make a decision fairly soon. So well, it could be in a day or, or, day or so. I'm assuming that uh, even though we know how important Go is, that uh, Go tournaments are probably not going to make the cut for essential uh, businesses. <laughs> so uh, right. what what's you know, um, does, does, does it's interesting. I'm I'm pretty sure that it will be shut down because the the Nihon Kin, the Go Association, is right in the middle of Tokyo. Yeah, yeah. And so it would could mean that they will finally have to close down the tournaments. It'd be a pity. Um, I don't think Japan is really set up to go online. I don't know. Really? Maybe that, that would be an option. Uh -huh. I think the Chinese have done that to a certain extent. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm seeing a comment from one of our viewers uh, that in chess, they're, they're planning to have a videotaping to prevent cheating. Uh, and I guess I assume that that's the concern, you know, now that, you know, you have really strong... Uh, computer programs that is a concern that the go players would cheat is that obviously the... it would be possible like it would be very easy to cheat sure um, and i think even if you have a like i could be set up like this and have a different computer somewhere else in the room right so um theoretically i could be cheating right now um, i'm not i could show you the whole room if you want <laughs> um so it's possible and i think you'd, you'd have to have a setup that would take care of that too and a lot of people would actually, uh, Go players um, tend to be various ages, like people young, my age, maybe younger than myself, would be okay with that. But computers came to Japan with Windows 95, so it wasn't so long ago. Mm. And there are, there are a number of people who are not very good at doing that, so they'd, they, some people would have trouble getting, some professional Go players would have trouble getting set up. 
Right. So, but I guess what I'm wondering is that if they don't figure out some way to play these tournaments online and they can't do it in person, I mean, or is this just, is this going to be like, you know, uh, as, as you know, I'm a big tennis fan. Of course, they, they've moved the French to the fall. They've canceled Wimbledon. Uh, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, but are, are, are you looking at just basically postponing tournaments or canceling them or is it not clear? I think the idea is going to be that they're going to try to, um, well, you know, I can't make these decisions for the Go Association. <laughs> and it's probably something that the sponsors will have to call about, too, because um, the sponsors, yeah, the sponsors will have to make decisions about that, too, because they're the ones dishing out the money, obviously. Sure, sure. They pay um, the piper. So we'll see what happens. It, it's going to be a pity. And yeah. Whatever, whatever, however it slows down. But, you know, everyone's hurting in this crisis. No, it's it's very serious. But I mean, I just I, I have to say, you know, it would be very difficult for me uh, to imagine sitting across a go board with what's going on right you now from something that is not that is not six feet. It's not far enough. Right. I mean, I mean, would you want to do that? Well, you know, I did play one game and it was very really. Disturbing. Yeah, very I, I don't I don't think well, at this point, I just want to try to survive this because I am in I think I'm in a, um, a high risk age group. So I, I don't want to get the virus. No, no, not, I don't even want to think about that. So, OK. All right. Uh, so, uh, folks, uh, let's actually, before we open it up uh, to folks, um, your, your, your YouTube channel, you got oh, your yeah. first lesson out there. Let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, I opened my YouTube channel yesterday. Um, I'm probably making a whole bunch of mistakes. Oh. Uh, actually, there was a mistake in the video that people were catching, um, <laughs> and it um, oh, I know. I know the one you're talking about. Uh, don't I, say I it. Don't say it. I think I the game is people have to find it without looking at the comments. That's right. That's right. Find a mistake. Uh, because if you look at the comments, then then you're cheating. You, you have to find it in the video. <laughs> <laughs> no, no cheating, people. No cheating. Yeah. And if you find it in the video, think, you can tease me about it. I think you should put one of those in every video on purpose, Michael. That's what I think. <laughs> All right. Just, you well, keep... Yeah. I, I find that people like it when I make mistakes. That, that happened with my Twitter account, too. Yeah, yeah. Just I to posted get people... the English version to my Japanese account. Yeah, and people like that. So but when just... you do it on purpose, people figure it out eventually. I'll have to find something different to do. Just to keep people on their toes. I'm going to try to make the contents better. Um, I, I do, I do see, see some things that um, maybe we're not perfect about that video, but I'm, I'm just starting. So I'm, so... I'm going to keep on going. All right, folks. So cut Michael some slack. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. Babs will put up the link. Uh, 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 to the uh, channel. It's also on our website uh, at usgo.org. Uh, so, you know, we've, we, we've, got, we've got Michael on all channels, basically. So uh, this coronavirus thing is awful, but the fact that we get to spend more time with you is a, a very nice side effect. I am, I am not going to complain about that, but we do need you to keep healthy. All right. Uh, on to the game. Just a reminder, folks, uh, one of the reasons we love streaming on Twitch is that we get to talk with you and you get to talk with us. So if you've got questions or comments as we go along, uh, just chime in and uh, I will be monitoring them and I will uh, re re relay them. <laughs> Easy for me to say to, uh, to Michael as we go. So game number 40. Game number 40. We are just just cooking with gas here what's uh what's the, the short version of game 40 what are we going to see short version is that in this game AlphaGo is going to look a bit like two human players and oh really so we're going to start with the mini chinese you know it's it's kind of never played again it, it's never played in modern go but they're going to get into the mini chinese and it's going to be something that looks almost like a normal variation there and on the whole it, it's playing in a fashion that Looks sort of human to me. Semi Until the end game. Until the end game. Okay. All right. Until the end game. It gets weird in the end game. Uh, I always like to think of the titles of the game. I think that that's it right there. It gets weird in the end game. That would be a good title. <laughs> <laughs> that would fit all of the games. That's true. That's yeah. true. All right. Game 40. Let's, uh, let's jump right into it. Okay. So Black is playing 3-4 uh, and no, uh, Star point, and we have this again. Um, oh, I, I keep saying again. I noticed that when I edit, edit my videos. Uh, this is a point where programs like Leela 
would want to play the approach move here. And I think all of the modern programs that came after AlphaGo have started to play away when um, someone plays this approach, this approach move to the star point. Quite often, the computer programs suggest playing away. And we're seeing a lot of that in human games, too. Mm. And of course, in this position, Leela and most of the computer programs will be giving this move for white, a, mo a white move at the mark point. Let's get rid of the other one. A white move there at Q5 is supposed to be very big. So usually this approach move is going to be forcing white. Black is going to probably answer it something like this, unless black does the, the pincer thing, which is um, it's going to lower black's score a little bit, I think. But in this game, AlphaGo just answered. And here we have the, the mini Chinese. It's never seen anymore. The, just about everyone will play this move here, the big Shimari. Again, this was given to us by AlphaGo. Um, it was very rare before AlphaGo played it. Um, AlphaGo was playing it in the Master vs. Master, this series, um, a number of times, actually. Mm -hmm. And the zero, um, AlphaGo Zero also likes to play this move, I think. But I think Master Master really started, got people started playing this move. And modern opening theory, I think most people are thinking that this exchange here that I've marked is good for black. And part of the reason is that white's going to jump into the three three point here, and there's a ladder variation in this Joseki. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The latter variation is going to be in my next uh, tutorial video. Yeah, and the first yeah. one, folks, should know is on the uh, the three three. It's, it's a really great way to start. That was a, a, a smart place to start, I think. Yeah, I might be sort of overdoing it, but I do have another video on the three three that I'm going to put out next week, which <laughs> is going to have a variation that involves a ladder, and this stone here is going to be a ladder breaking. Mode. Okay, so we'll see that. But in this game. White just plays this Kakari. And it's not even attachment. Like with AlphaGo, I think we saw AlphaGo playing this move once. And we saw AlphaGo playing this move too. And this move is very popular with modern computer programs. They're, they're all using the same system that AlphaGo used. So I think at some point it, um, it became the AlphaGo move too. But in this game, AlphaGo is just playing a move that a human player would play. And again, black plays this. Well, black is a bit different. This is this is maybe the first move that looks a bit different. The old Joseki would be, for instance, for black to play here. And we quite often played this kind of variation. This was actually a very popular variation. And white would play this. And black would play something around here. After this, white would have a living shape on the lower side. This shape here, although it's, it could be a bit hard to tell, um, it's perfectly alive. So this was a Joseki that was considered to be about even. Yeah. For instance, if black at some point, after black um, surrounds white, um, which is not probably not going to happen very soon, but it, eventually black can play here, white can play here, it's alive. Or white can even, uh, that was actually a slack move. Black, white could even play here, it's still alive. Yeah. Um, and basically there's two There's two vital points. Like if black plays this side, white can play this side, it's gonna be okay. And if black plays the other side, if black plays the other side, then white just plays this white. This is okay too. So white's just, white has two key points and black cannot take both of them. And the fact that white is locally alive here is what makes this um, a feasible way for white to play. It's a surprising, uh, surprisingly resilient shape. I mean, I think for a lot of uh, certainly Q players looking at that, it, it looks scary, right? It looks scary until you realize that there's two key points, and yeah. white gets one of one of the two. And so this has been a Joseki for a long time. And going back to my my lowdown. Time I can remember games where I played this. Uh, probably thirty, something like thirty years ago. I forget how long ago it was. Wow. But the the big knight's move that's interesting. It's it's a weaker move, but for the time being, white cannot 
do anything about it because this fight would just be too dangerous for white. Like white could break through here, but that would just kill the two stones on this side. Mm. So it's not working. So white cannot do anything about it immediately and plays a shoulder hit here. You can see white is sort of eyeing this weak point, um, depending on how black deals with it. So black curls around, and now white just goes for a living shape. So this is relatively simple, and it's alive. This is alive. And you can see in this position, black did not play that move I was showing before, because this would be too weak on this side. It would be just mm. dangerous. So black plays the hanging connection. In this variation, now white has enough room to be alive. And when you see a position like this, like a high down player would just recognize that as a living shape. But if you're, say, a Q player or a double digit Q player, um, my rule of thumb is just to look at the size of what you think is a territory. And if you look at this white, you, you think it's a territory probably you see a territory something like this, if you imagine the lines, the border line. Sure. And if you look at it like this, it looks like white has eight points. And eight points is almost always outside of the danger zone. Like the danger zone where you're gonna get a lot of life and death problems is usually six points. So mm -hmm. if, this, if this looked like six points, like if the white stones were a line lower and you only had this much space, then depending on very minor differences. It would sometimes be alive and sometimes be dead. <clears throat> and you'd have to be able to read it out. I think say uh, six dies, eight lives. That's on the second, when you have stones lined up on the second line. Right. You know. but similar. It's sort of similar. Six points is borderline. It's usually okay, but it depends on the how solid the wall surrounding it is. But that's, that's the shape, the six point shape is where you get most of the life and death positions. So black <laughs> has finished the right side here. And the lower side is a bit unsettled because um, I just moved a move ahead of it. But white does have that invasion at A to look forward to. But black continues on the right side. Michael, and somebody, white, want, somebody wanted to know, we were talking about six and seven, so somebody wants to know what's Six and eight, so he wants to know what's seven. <laughs> seven is usually good. Like, that's just like it would be six with a little knob added, usually. Right. So it would right. be something, for instance, if we had a six like this with border lines here, and then we had an extra stone here, quite often this, this extra point that is sort of sticking out is going to become one of the eyes. So it's really actually a seven point position is pretty easy to make eyes with, too. Oh, you're just getting very creative with that drawing. It's so, very useful, isn't it? It's, it's wonderful, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And I think the thing is too is that you know those people need to remember these are these are sort of shorthand rules. But I mean, the reality is you, you actually have to read it out because yeah, you a, have to read it out. There's but a like lot of if you're playing a game of Go and you're a Q player, maybe you don't want to try it already. <laughs> like you, you would be able to read it out a bit further along in the game. Yeah. Yeah. So so that that's why it helps sometimes to have these. Yeah. So black jumped out. There was no way to capture this white stone really immediately. Like black could have played here. Let's see if, what what happens if black plays here. I'm I'm probably getting into trouble now. It looks very dangerous. White could probably just cut here. And we might get into something like this. And it looks like at the worst white can sacrifice the um sacrifice these two stones, even if black captures them, like if, if it's something like this, white would be getting plenty on the left side, just sacrificing the two stones. Mm. White's position here in the corner, securing this corner would be big, and the position on the left side is good too. So that would be good enough for white. So back to the game. Oh, sorry, I'm, I jumped ahead. So back to the game, I'm here. And white invaded. Black just jumped out. So white jumps out too. And now black lives in the corner. So this is a bit different. Like black would, it would be a natural move for black to play at A. But as I was saying, this white group here, uh, let's mark it with the triangle here. This mark group, this 
mark group is alive already. So even if black plays at A, it's going to be OK. Yeah. So white continues with this. This is an interesting move. You would expect white to play at A. But uh, white didn't do that. White's actually just trying to make a thick shape here. And mm -hmm. I think it's an indication that AlphaGo is white. Probably thinks it has has a good position here already. Ah, right. And when Al when AlphaGo is doing that, it's talking about something like a half point difference anyway. So it's not as if it's it has this huge lead. But I think that white is feeling happy about the game. You might say. And so it's just trying. The the running fight would be more like, for instance, white playing here, and black could jump out, or maybe black would be playing here to make shape. This would give black some eye shape, for instance. If we had something like, well, um, one of the patterns would be this one. Maybe here. Black already has one eye here and some potential for a second eye. Like if black played something like this, black would be able, oh, sorry, not that one, this one. If black <coughs> played something like this, black could make two eyes. And so it's, it would be a running fight. This looks like it would be playable. Like I, I would feel I was bad with white, but the fact that white chose to play this move instead. Uh, with this move, if black pulls back, this exchange has been good for white. This exchange of the two marked stones, it's taking away black's potential there. White would probably just play a move on top, and black would have to go after the one stone eventually. So taking this stone after pulling back at one is sort of, it's not very efficient. So black just goes after the stone. Well, it's interesting. This is equivalent sort of to, to going after the stone. But for instance, if black plays here, the idea is for white just to close off the center like this. So that's white's plan. And then white would probably just play away, maybe something like this. And so this would be fine for white. Mm. Just, just making a thick shape and a strong shape and making a moyo on the left side. White AlphaGo doesn't really focus so much on attacking as much as I would, for instance. A lot of human players, once they see, for instance, a black group like this, they think they have to attack it. And I, I would want to be thinking about attacking this black group. But AlphaGo quite often will, will sort of change that and just play big moves. So white plays here, it's, it's a very similar idea to this thing that I was, oh, actually this one. It's very similar to this idea that I was showing you where white is closing up the center. White attaches on the top, again, offering that one stone to get a thick shape, a strong shape. Black bumps against and captures the one stone. So again, it's very similar to what I was showing before and white is going to play away. Yeah, so white played here on the upper side. And you know, it's, there's no no uh, direct three three points. It looks sort of like a human game. It does. It's, it's actually very. Uh, it's if, if you had to show this to me without telling me, I I would not have. It just doesn't look like a typical AlphaGo game. Doesn't look like it. And Black's playing a pincer here, and like again, kicking at A and then pincering at B is a kind of a standard pattern that sure, we, we learn. Sure. We learn this pattern when we have nine stones or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Of course, I would be thinking about a low pincer. I, I sort of like the low pincer better. Yeah. But this, so this is also, it's allowing black the opportunity to, allowing white the opportunity to jump in, jump into the upper side later in the game. But white starts by jumping out. So this uh, reinforces the white stones <laughs> and is sort of making a base for white to, get into the, the right side there with a move somewhere around here. And black peeps. Now this move, it sort of, it came unexpected. Uh, it, it handles all of black's problems. Obviously, if white answers it, let's see, what did I do? I, I okay, I'm talking about something different in the variations. But if white answers it, this exchange has been a slight well, it's it's a slight gain, you might say. It's, it's better to have it on the board than not to. And white has 
the question of whether White wants to do that or maybe White wants to do this later in the game. Okay. In which case, if Black answers on this side, White has a better shape. This is so much better. It's a lot better for White. And, and if Black cuts, sorry, and if Black cuts here, that would be sort of bad for Black because White would be able to play these forcing moves. And at some point, White would be able to cut the Black stone off in the center. White might not do that immediately. So that would be a bit mm. painful for Black. And White would be giving Black the option of, of playing here for a very small territory on the side. So this, this is one way White can play it. And playing here is another way White can play it. I think what AlphaGo is doing here is it's just leaving those two options. So I understand White playing away. White played here in the upper side. I understand that. But I don't understand why Black had to play the peak now. So I would have played at A. Uh, why don't I just put the stone on the board? I would have played here. Uh, putting pressure on the white group and creating a forcing move here, you might say. It's not as if it's always forcing, but like if white invades the corner, then black can, for instance, play here. And with that connection at 018, that connection on the second line, black has nothing to worry about in the fight here. It's an easy fight for black to play. Right. And if white plays like this, it's going to take, it's going to take, more than one move for white to live in the corner like mm -hmm. even if we assume something like this and we could have black play fairly conservatively white's going to need one more move in the corner because uh, this is going to be dead well something like that I, i'm i probably should have started with a different move but if we isolate that position this would have been one of the ways uh, to kill row. it's probably more correct to start with this move actually but that's yeah, yeah, a fine yeah. point. So, so your point is that the timing of that peep is a little odd, right? It seems premature. I, I would have played this move just to reinforce the upper right corner, reinforce black in, in the upper side. The upper side now is slightly more, like if white does stuff like this, white could break open the upper side. But right. it would be a dangerous fight for white as far as the upper right area is concerned because white mm. has this weak group on the other side. So just adding that one stone there is it makes it much more difficult for white to be making trouble here. So I, I wouldn't approve of white too actually. I, I would I would think white would probably play another move towards the right side, maybe, maybe something like this. And and black would be securing the corner territory. And then black would I would still want to add, for instance, like if something like this happened. I would probably still want to add something to the upper side. I would maybe play this move very popular move nowadays mm. and i would just reinforce that would be the one area that i would want to reinforce because it's a potential black territory mm -hmm. and it's also a potential black weak group so yeah. it's there's potential profit and there's potential danger from whereas this group on the lower side it is potentially a weak group but the move that white plays to attack it is not a very big move like what if white starts with something like just ignoring the position on the top, if we say white plays something like this, that move in itself is something like a five point move. So it's not as if it's a really big move that white's playing. Mm. And then black can play the beat. And so it's, it's not so easy for white to gain anything from attacking this black group because this black group doesn't have any territory to start with. It's not as if white's getting any extra profit out of it. So I would be protecting the upper side and the upper right corner the two areas that can still be Black's territory. Mm -hmm. And yeah, no, so all I can say is I just didn't understand that. Yeah, no, it seems Echo, much bigger, much bigger. It's alpha go. Um, when I um, study it and I, um, I ask Leela, I go into details, and if I still don't understand it, I usually figure that it has to do with the, um, the assessment of the position. So like if alpha go feels that it, has a bad position, then it will do sort of it will do unexpected stuff mm. that would that I would not call the optimal move. Sometimes mm -hmm. it does that. Probably um, finds that this would make the game more complicated with the potential at some point for Black to to get some extra territory here. Maybe mm. um, it arguably it complicates the game. Mm. So White types in here. I like this move. Yeah, I really like. This. 
Me too. Wow. Uh, like usually you would expect white to dive in here. And it's very similar. Like this would maybe black would play here. Mm -hmm. If black plays this way, it's very similar. And let's say black played something like this. It would just, it, we're going to look at the actual game next. But the, the fact that white started with this mark move, it's going to amount to the fact that this move has been exchanged to something on the left, like black 12. And that exchange is probably not so good. It's probably better not to have that. So let, let's take a look at what happened in the game. White played here and black covered on top. And white got to connect underneath. So it's very similar. And at this point, black has, oh, sorry. At this point, at this point, yes, sorry about that. At this point, white has, black has no way to capture the two white stones. I, I've marked one of them, might as well mark both of them. Black has no way to capture these two stones. Black's local move could be at A. So let's say let's say black. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So let's have black play that move. For instance, if black plays here, it's probably better not for white to be crawling immediately. White could play away. White could jump into the three-three point, for instance. Or if white's going to play locally, it's probably better for white to be doing it this way, and, mm. and leaving more weakness for the black group. So it, this is what white gets. Now I'll just mark one of the white stones. It's what white is getting by starting at this mark point. Let's just run through that once more, the, the game mm. sequence where white starts with this move. It, it's probably just with this white stone here. White has one extra stone in the vicinity compared to what we were looking at before. So if black plays strongly like this, it's probably just dangerous. White could play here. Uh, if white just gets out of this, then there's going to be two weak black groups. So it looks dangerous for black. Sure does. Wow. So black covered. I think I agree with black covering on the top, but um, I really like the white move there. So we got to this point, and like this would be normal. In the game, black took territory again. So you can see black is grabbing territory on the lower side. And since Black's group in the corner, let's mark the Black group. This, since this group was alive already, I find that to be sort of counterintuitive that Black is grabbing territory in this vicinity. But in a way, I think that AlphaGo is just trying to take the territory, AlphaGo is Black, that is, and see what White can do with an attack on the upper side. It's a very patient move, isn't it? Yeah. And so White closes black out of the corner. This is an example like where you would be tempted to play something like this. I think the idea is that this would allow black to jump into the 3-3 point or maybe play this thing and reduce the corner territory while making a living shape. So white is just taking the corner territory and, uh, and just making it the one weak black group. It's a good example of how to attack groups and take territory at the same time. And black, it looks like black is trying to attack this wall here. And white just jumps into the 3-3 three, three point. And now pincers. So the pincer here is, again, it's a very natural move that any human player would play. Wait, 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 wait. go back. So black attached, attacked the wall and white just was like, yeah, whatever. Well, you know, next, a move, a move somewhere around here would be pretty serious business. It would attack that black group. So yeah. black really needs one move there also. And this yeah. white group, although black, it looks like black's trying to attack it, it does have a move at the 3-3 three, three point would manage to make a living shape. And also white does have enough height that it's not as if um, anything is going to happen immediately. OK, all right. So black covers here. And I think the idea is that if white continues locally, white's move is probably going to be here and then black can play something on the side. So it's it's making those interchangeable move, moves. Like if white plays something on the side now, black will have no trouble living in the corner. Black already has a living shape. So sure. this is handling the threat in the most profitable way possible. Mm -hmm. And now white pincers, again, and, and in this case, like it's a probably, it would be safer to play here, but that would allow black to play something on the left side. And black would be getting the cast while white was playing. A pretty useless point. 
So it makes sense that white wants to pincer once here. A human player would play this way. And then um, now this move is exciting. White is just sort of ignoring the attack on white's group. <laughs> and black hits a key point. Like if white plays at A, there's still a weakness at B. Yeah. So white starts to try to make a life. And white's still going to be OK. Like this is, it took the last moment to, to try to live. And I think it's Look. still in time. It's and of course, game. with this, yeah. No, it was a little bit of a game of chicken. I was trying to see. I wanted to see. Uh, go ahead, White. Ignore one more move. <laughs> yeah. Well, with these two stones here, now White has potential. It hasn't started yet, but there is some potential to uh, launch an attack against this black group. In order to do that, uh... in order to do that, White has to save these two stones because if Black captures these stones with a cut on the second line, then of course that would make the group alive. And so black isn't really trying to kill white at this point. He's just trying to fix his fix the shape. And black's real aim is probably some kind of an attack on this area that white has, some kind of an invasion, because black is reinforcing black is reinforcing this group, which means that the next step is to attack on the other side. So black is looking at this area when black plays this attachment towards the corner. Mm -hmm. And white answered, obviously. So this is just a sequence that is usually used defensively when black is trying to fix the shape there. Oh, yeah. Notice that black played this peep before white could get this peep in. If white yeah. gets this peep in, then that peep that black played would not have been forcing anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's an example of a good order of moves. And white is now alive in the corner. And here, here comes Black's attack. So Black is making a, an attack against White on the left side. And I, I, I wrote it out in, let's see, this move. And well, obviously, if White plays here, I'm, I'm saying that Black is going to play here. It looks like White's a bit heavy, I would say, like meaning that these five stones are, when White plays at one, it becomes um, dangerous or difficult for white to be throwing away those five stones. If white plays in a way that saves those five stones, it means that black is going to be on the offensive. So white wants to keep the option of sacrificing those stones and, for instance, uh, trading for an attack on these stones would be a better idea for white. Mm -hmm. So white doesn't really want to play on the second line at one. That would be just adding to the number of stones that white has to sacrifice. A more common move would be this one. Like if black uh, moves in this direction, it would be a very small thing. White could just give up a few points on the side and be no big deal. Mm. But black's going to play here. Something like this could have happened. This, this would be a relatively simple way for white to play. And maybe it would have been good enough, but it wouldn't have been exciting as the game. So somebody's raising a good point that I was actually just wondering about, which is... Um, Black seems to have created himself two weak groups uh, mm -hmm. against just the one weak white group, which is yes. usually better for the uh, you know the, the 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 side that has just the one group to uh, to handle. What's what's your analysis of that? Okay, well uh, my take on this is that the game is going slightly better for white, mm. and you you will remember that um, when I feel this way with the games that AlphaGo plays. It turns out that it's a very small difference anyway. Mm. But I, I have this feeling throughout this game that white is sort of in control. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if I was playing this game, I would feel that way too. Like I, th th that would be my gut feeling even in real time. And I get the, I, and so in a human game, even if the players were human, they would, black would be thinking of doing stuff like this anyway. Like black is getting into trouble tactically but um if we look at the overall position maybe it's a good idea to get into some local trouble and hope that black can handle it skillfully enough mm. uh, to catch up in territory for instance or to to um to create create a disturbance just to make it more difficult for white to finish off the game because if, mm. i think if black plays more simply if black plays uh what might be 
called a more sensible move of playing something like this, for instance, and white would just jump here. Um, very sensible, but uh, very easy for black to lose now. It's very relatively easy for white to win. It would just not be good enough. Black has to try something. And you can see that black is trying, going to try something by the fact that black did play this peak from inside white's territory. Mm -hmm. If black just does nothing with that, it's going to be increasing white's territory. So black does already have, you could say black had a plan. Although I know that AlphaGo doesn't think in the same way that human players do. Um, not the same logic, but it, you could say it has a plan. It had this plan when it played the peak. Mm -hmm. And black has to try something, basically. And white is, I like this move. White is making me up, is making interchangeable ideas. Um, the idea of white cutting off all these black zones on the left and just capturing them, obviously a big threat. And the other idea is just an attack on this black group. White is, is still threatening to attack that black group. And splitting them, starting by splitting the two groups. It's very sensible and it's common sense. And here we now we get started. Okay, all right. Buckle uh, up. Buckle up. I'm oh, there it is. There it is. Trying to explain what's happening here. <laughs> I, it's I, really I, difficult. I, well, like if White plays here, what happens? I'm sure that a lot of players would just think that think that it would, has to be this move. This seems such a natural move. It sure does, but it's just that much extra extra for Black. Black got that I at A is really important. It's big. Having an eye, a, a one eye shape here, means that the whole black group that black is connected on the first line, it has a potential eye here. Right. So it's going to be very easy for black to make two eyes. Making two eyes and connecting up the the right in the more moving out into the center or something like that. Uh, those are interchangeable points. It means that with this group completely settled, this this group. I'll just mark a few of the stumps. This group here is completely settled because it has the option of making two eyes or connecting up to the group, this group on the right. The fact that it's completely settled is going to make it that much easier for this other weak group because all Black has to worry about is this one group now. And it's going to be okay because Black does have that cut on the second line. White has to deal with the cut here before White can start attacking. So not only has Black played a little endgame sequence there, to gain some territory, but that I at A is, is very, very important. It makes a big difference. And it's a lot of points. Like you, you see that territory on the second line, it might look small, but just just on the second line there, Black has something like six points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that Whereas just... otherwise, like if Black had simply played, if Black had simply played uh, this move, if Black had simply played this move, uh, it could it could easily just be zero points. In this variation, it, it, that's that's maybe maybe one point, but n no eyes at all, and then black would have to be worried about that group. So it's a big difference there. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what happens if white plays this move, and I think that it would this variation would be good enough to make me unsure of white's lead. That's a lot of territory that black has taken, and a lot of extra value in the fact that black is going to be alive in this position. Or close enough to life. So uh, white you, plays down. Uh, yes. pe people are wondering about the uh, the take at C16 about whether that's necessary or why that's necessary. Okay. Good question. So if white plays something like this, um, that's a really good question. I, I hadn't even thought about that. <laughs> good one. Yeah. I'm trying to see who made that. Uh, bouncy J, Bouncy J. Okay, let's have Black play once here. And this is usually a, this is a test strategy that you see a lot. And White's going to play once here. Oh, I see it. Oh, that's clever. Boom. Uh, something like this, maybe. Uh, D14. D14. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. It looks like white's going to be okay. <clears throat> um, 
but even if we get something, it is a bit disturbing though, isn't it? Like something like this, something like this. It looks like black is getting a lot back. Maybe it's something like something like this is, is going to happen. And black is getting a lot of um, thickness, a lot of strength on the outside in return for sacrificing all those stuffs. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. But yeah, um, I wasn't really prepared for that question, so I could be <laughs> wrong. But something like, there's a lot of bad Aji associated with that move. I just didn't think of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was a, oh. a great question. Good question, folks. Good question. Yeah. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Okay, so white went straight down. And for the time being, there's nothing special that's going to happen. So let's see. Black played away. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know how, how to explain this. Black played away. White played away. Oh, hold it. Hold, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I know you don't know how to explain it. But I mean, black has played three moves in that area. Yeah. And you well, said, gonna... you said, I know, but you said that black had a plan. Yeah. And now, and now black is, has socially distanced all the way across the board. <laughs> what? What? Okay. Well, um, you're going to have to see what happens. in All the right. Board. All right. Okay. You're going to have to see what happens. But just to paraphrase for what's going to happen, by playing this stone here, black has created some potential in the corner. And something is going to happen because black got that stone there and exchanged it with this white stone. It's giving black something to do in the upper right, upper left corner. All right. And black still has this move, right? And so I, the only way I can uh, rationalize this is to say that these two areas, the upper left corner and the left side, AlphaGo must be treating them as um, Mi'i, interchangeable points. Mm. Because, of course, the, the moves that are being played on the right side are big moves, too, like the, this move and this move. They're both, uh, well, the white move was for forcing, but this, these two moves, uh, let's mark them. This move and this move, they were both big moves. Usually, I would expect white to play that move first and then black to answer. Uh, it was sort of weird that black was playing first and then white answered, but they are both big moves. Mm -hmm. And I think that basically it's just that the left side, black actually has... This this stone to move out with, and this stone to move to this side with. I guess it's looking at them, and I, I would never think of doing that. I can say that to you. I can say that I would never think of playing this this order of moves. But now 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 this is the game variation. AlphaGo has started to move out. Ah, okay, all right. Yeah. So it's a lot easier just to ignore that stuff that happened on the right side of the board. Pretend it didn't happen, because on the left side of the board, it is kind of a sequence here that is logically continuing from this move. And it's sort of weird that uh, there were four moves in between. But um, th we'll just look at what's, what's happening here. I'll, I'll go. It's, uh, it's schizophrenic. Yeah, well, it likes to tease me like that, you know. <laughs> so... Uh, you might have expected black to push through here, but actually black did not do that. And it's a, it's a very fascinating sequence that happens here. So in the game, you would not expect black to play this move, but this is where AlphaGo played. Uh, I, I've been thinking for a while that I was trying to set something up there. I just couldn't figure it out. Something like C17, or I didn't see the Hane, but it seemed something there. So I'm going to take a look at what happens if black just simply pushes through and tries to do something here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. White's going to kill the stones in the corner. And nothing much is going to happen, because if black cuts here, white can still win the semi. So it's, wow. not, it's not... In order to make this work, basically black needs, at this point, at this point, let's, let's just go back to this point. When black plays at three... All of this would be working if Black had a stone on the 3-3 three, three point. So Black really needs to start from right. the 3-3 three, three point. Right. That's, that's what I had in my eye for a while was a 3-3 three, three point. Right. This playing, starting with Hane, is actually a more effective way of getting to the 3-3 three, three point. So this is the uh, game uh, sequence, okay, and okay. it's the idea that Black had. So now, what happens if uh, White all connects? Right, all right. This is the next question. So now what happens if White connects? This is what's going to happen. Black's going to connect now. 
And you can see at this point already that black has a lot more liberties than black did before. I see. So in order to kill the black group, white has to start with five, because if white does something else, then black's just going to cover there. Right. And it's going to be so easy for, it, it could even be, well, this shape in the corner for the time being, it's going to be a co. But white has to deal with the cut here, uh, the cut at this point. And so it's no problem for black. Black could even end with Sente here. Wow. So that would be easy. Uh, the, so white curls around. This is the way that white can try to kill black. Black will push through and cut. All right. And cut here. Yeah. Now, this is a direct threat against the two stones here, because black is threatening to cut on the sixth line. Black is threatening to cut. Like if white right. played something like this, black would just cut here and capture two stones. So that would be the easy way. So white has to answer directly. Black gets to cut here anyway. And and actually, white's winning the semi. But black has all sorts of stuff that black to look forward to. Like first of all, um, black has white has no way to capture the black stones on the side, and white's group on this side is in trouble. Mm. Like if white, uh, a simple example of how white could get into big trouble is if white cuts here, then it's very easy. It's very quick. The whole white group dies. So white has trouble trying to cut that black group. And if wow. white tries to the other side, again, it would be troublesome because now white has to deal with these, these two stones are in trouble too. For instance, if, um, if white plays on this side, black can always capture these two stones. This is a, this is just dead. Mm. And so there's, there's all sorts of stuff that could happen there. And at the very least, black is going to get some kind of a squeeze, like white could play, white can't play that way, white can't play this way. And white has these stones on the side here, which are in trouble. And black has all these options of playing stuff like A and squeezing white a little bit. So it's not such a big white territory. So I decided this looks okay for black. Mm. It's, still, it's still really complicated, even at this point. But connecting here, is definitely a dangerous variation for white. So white just pushed through. In this variation, uh, playing the Hane on the second line first, just playing that exchange, the marked exchange there, it's, given, it's giving black a little bit extra territory. By capturing the one white stone. Mm -hmm. And now black is settled that black group on the upper side. So black did get something out of it. Um, and this actually looks locally, it looks like a big success for black. But again, um, uh, in this case, I think the idea is that white has, has taken sente, has a tempo now, so white can move to the right side. And this was a really big move, this invading here. It was a huge move. So I guess that's okay for white. I would I would say that black has had a success locally, but white it's, kept the game relatively simple. It scooped out a pretty big corner. Yeah, and black still does have this 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 to look forward to. The, uh, it's the connection the run, on the second line. The connection on the second line, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, B B ten, yeah. So white invades the right side. Uh, it's very difficult for black to try to attack this group. So, so just uh, just a second here. So, so actually, one of the I mean, even though a lot of that stuff uh, on the left side was fairly complicated, I think a, a good takeaway for us amateur players is, you know, there's clearly that big move on the right side, and so, you know, uh, White's goal is to sort of, you know, Black's entitled to something on that left side, clearly, right? So White well, wants. It's not clear, but yeah, it turns out that way, yeah. Something. I mean, if, even if it was just the just the simpler stuff you were showing with the crawling, you know, at, at oh, yeah. uh, ten and so forth. So black's going to get something. White wants to minimize that so that white can get into this big move. Because if black gets out, gets up, gets out to there first, it's, that's that's too big, right? Right. Right. Well, that if the right side became black territory at this point, then it would probably be good for black. Yeah. Yeah. So white did simplify it, and you can see that white does have a very 
a strong settled shape there on the left side of the board. So the fact that white doesn't have any weak stones anywhere, it's making it easy for white to jump in here. So just to give you a kind of a basic variation for what happens with this invasion, like if black plays here, the tesuji, the, the good move is to play the three. This is a very common pattern. Like if white tries to live locally, maybe white could live locally with a move like this, but it would be very, very cramped. And actually, uh, it could be dangerous. So white goes all the way here. And if black cuts it off, actually, I didn't do that. If black cuts it off, white's just going to get uh, an equal territory on the other side. That black root, those four black stones on the other side, they're just going to be dead. And wow. so white's offering a trade, basically. It, and, and the result is that white is going to get a lot more space. It's so much more space. This is much more easy for white to live because white has, if white plays here, white's going to have another eye there. Uh, the other eye, let's mark it with a square. There's going to be an eye at this point. Or I could just uh, play stones, I guess. Like if black plays something like this, it's going to be easy for white to live. Like white, even locally, white could play something like this. White already has enough space. But also there's the fact that white can play stuff like this to make another eye at this point. So there's so much more space that white gets by starting with that move at four. Um, if, this if one. You yeah, go back to the to the because um, I think a lot of people would would look at just the slide and, and try and live directly, and, and this is so much better. It's it's so flexible, right? By okay, by, this move, yeah, this is this is um, like it would be the direct way to try to live. Sure, but it's sort of worrying. Like um, if we just look at it locally, it's it's not even alive. Right. But, right. Um, Maybe white could survive because black does have to, like if one of these two points, or actually white, white in the process of dying, white's going to get stones at both of these mark points. <laughs> and so that's going to be a bit of trouble for black. It, it's going to be dangerous for black too. Uh -huh. So um, I'm not sure that black can immediately try to kill it, but in any case, it's going to be a very small life. It's it's much obviously much worse than than this variation where white's getting so much more space. Right. So this move is is worth remembering. This this move where white plays here. Uh, yeah. Sorry, this white four. You see it all the time in professional games. So it's not as if AlphaGo invented it. Um, it's a very common shape that white plays. Um, invading a very similar shape of black territory. It's a, it's, a, it's something that happens a lot. This shape. And the tape I'm talking about is probably, like I was just sort of intuitively saying that, but um, I'm talking about this shape with the large knight's move and then some stone, some one more stone on the side. So the third stone could be one of these two marchable points. Right. It's a very common kind of a territorial position. And when white attacks that with an invasion here, white is always eyeing this weak point here. It's, it's, always, it's always something that white is thinking of. Yeah, especially when black plays that attachment on top. Like if black had played uh, something looser like this, then white could still be looking at that point. White could still be looking at this point, but sometimes this one, this kind of stuff works too. Sometimes it, you have to read it out and choose which one you like better. Yeah. So the important thing I think for folks is to have because you see us all the time in amateur games where you know they'll dive in and. And then, you know, then try to uh, live and then, you know, just dies big. Right. Yeah, I, I it know just that. dies. It dies big or or sometimes even worse. It, it lives, but it lives really small, you know, in Gote. And, uh, you know, your opponent gets to do something big somewhere else. And you realize, you know, it wasn't, you know, really, really worth it uh, at all. I'm going to give you a quick uh, tea break opportunity. Uh, folks were okay. asking. Uh, well, first of all, it's tea because it's uh, it's in the morning in Tokyo. They, they think you're drinking bourbon, which I'm not saying you couldn't have bourbon first thing in the morning, but <laughs> uh, that is tea. Good uh, Japanese yeah, tea, tea, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, the question was about the uh, the stream. So uh, this one, and, and Babs can correct me, but I think that uh, these are on 
uh, Twitch for a certain amount of time uh, where you can replay them. Uh, and then we will be porting them over to our YouTube channel. I think, and Babs can let me know, I think we're two behind. I think the last one we posted on YouTube was maybe 36. So You're I talking think, about the AGA YouTube channel. Yeah, the AGA YouTube channel. So yeah. I think I think 37 and 37 and 38 or 38 and 39. Somebody can check and tell me. But yeah, we're, we're a couple behind. Um, yeah, I think yeah. I remember that on a weekly schedule too, right? So, it, so, it, so yeah, we're a bit ahead of the schedule. Yeah, we, we, we were on a weekly schedule and, and then uh, we got, uh, those of us with day jobs got busy dealing with the coronavirus. So yep. <laughs> we, will, we will catch up and we will get them all posted. Uh, and then, um, and we're, we'll have more time for questions uh, at the end of the commentary. But uh, this is game 40 and I believe we're planning to do all 55, right? We could do 55. I was originally planning to do 50, but there are five more yeah. that were released to China, Chinese players. And right. they, those five games are not really a part of the 50-game set, but they are by the master version of Alpico right. playing against itself. So we, right. could, we could go ahead and do those five games, too. Uh, yeah, we're getting, so we're, we're, we are getting uh, you know, down to the last 10, maybe 15 games, and uh, we, haven't even, we haven't even talked about the, uh, the AlphaGo Zero games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're different. <laughs> yeah. We haven't even talked about that. We have not. We're not going to talk about it right now. Anyway, so those are a couple of questions there. So thanks for asking those. Uh, we will continue working. And as I said, because uh, we do have some time and have some availability for Michael, we're going to take advantage of that uh, while we can get him on uh, for, for these commentaries. So, all right, back to the game. Okay. Oh, wait. So this is what happens? Black has just played a very indirect move. It's, yeah. Um, and again, uh, as I was saying before, it's looking very much like a human. And it's looking like Black thinks that it's um, at a disadvantage in this board position. Because this kind of move is giving White a lot of options. Like, it, it's not as if White is going to die immediately in the on the side. But the threat behind this move that Black has played at the S2 point is that if black plays next, for instance, if black gets to play a stone somewhere around here, white will not have enough room to live. Mm. This is this is a weaker position than the that six point shape that I was talking about. It's it's less than six points. There's no way that white can turn this into six points. So if black plays next, white's in danger. White's life is in danger. Um, but of course, for the time being, white still has seems to have plenty of room in this area. So white has a lot of options. White could be thinking of moving out with these stones, maybe. Uh, any, any kind of move around here would do that. White could move out with these stones. Or white could just try to make a life by playing something like this or something like this. Sorry, something like this, maybe. Or white can move out with the, this stone. White can start stuff here. White has so many options. And when you're behind, what I see strong players do is they give their opponent a lot of options and make it very difficult for in white in this case to find an easy winning uh, strategy because white does have a lot of options, but white also has one extra thing to worry about. White has to worry about these stones also. So depending on how white does it, there's the danger that this group is going to die. So white has to be White has a lot of options, but it's confusing for White. Like if White was a human player, it would be very easy for White to get confused at this point. Uh -huh. And like in a human game at this point, that we would maybe be down to overtime. And uh, that would add yeah, to the... Yeah, yeah. So it's something you see a title holder player, that, that level of a player. You see them play this kind of move when they think that they, if they continue in a normal fashion, maybe they're behind, they'll, they'll do something like that. So White plays here. White, very straightforward. White is escaping with that stone on the side. And white hits that weak point. So white's doing very normal stuff here, actually. White looks confident that, uh, as you were saying earlier, that it's kind of driving the game, right? It's still driving the game. But there is the fact that this white group here is gradually um, getting into trouble. So. There is a lot of danger associated with this group. 
Yeah. For the time being, the fight there that's happening on the upper right area, in the upper right area, that fight is probably more important right now. So Black has to deal with that before Black can actually try to kill the white group. And there is still a little bit of extra space here. What's going to make it, for the time being, it's difficult for Black to go ahead and kill it. So now this is seriously in danger. Like this white group on the side could be uh, killed by a, a black move. If black plays next in this area, now it's going to die. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. at the same same time, that's that black group in the upper right. It, there's more territory associated with it. Like that, that's seven white stones, and let's see, it's eight black stones, about the same number. But the empty squares, the empty space attached to the group is much bigger in the upper right. There's much more space attached to the black group, which means if white kills that black group, it's going to be that much bigger. Sure. So black has to continue here. And, you know, white's sort of playing with fire. That group on the lower side is still in danger, but black doesn't, doesn't have time to kill it yet. Yeah, I think we're going to call this the game of chicken. <laughs> and white's group on the right side this group here, it might look like it's in a bit of danger. It does. Um, right, yeah. So, but actually cutting here is, it's a dangerous idea for black too. Like white would just be able to cut. Uh, I mean, black can connect everything up. We could say that's forcing black can connect up, but white's already more or less alive now. Yeah. And black is in big trouble on the side. Uh, wow. I made this variation. White is wow. escaping in the center, and yep, it look, yep, just looks yep. too dangerous for Black. As as I was saying before, even if Black manages to capture this group, Black's group on the right side is going to be too big. Mm. So Black didn't do that. Just cutting here, it's, it's such a clumsy-looking move. Like when, 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 when White does that, Black has such a terrible shape. Mm. So it makes sense that Black played here. And Black is sort of preferring that. Like... In this case, if black gets to cut next, it will be a bit different. Like if, if white had played something like this, then this move would not be working anymore. It would, um, with that extra stone there, black is perfectly connected up. So that might be a bit different. It, it looks more promising for black. Yeah, it does. It still is very complicated. But white just connected up. And so white is protected here and it's gonna let black escape. The moment black escapes, white's going to be able to save the lower side. Oof. So that finishes that fight, and white lives. So now white's alive on the lower side. Yeah. This is kind of a vital point. So it, oh it my makes God. <laughs> I, can't, I can't take the stress here, Mike. Oh, my God. That white group looked like it was about to die. It was, it was, it was about to die, but it wasn't big enough to kill. <laughs> Okay, I like this move that Black has played. And Black is sort of, now is sort of threatening to attack this white group, but it's not as if white is in big trouble because white does have an eye on the side here. If white plays here, uh, let's, let's do it with stones just to make it easier. If white plays here and here, then white's gonna have an eye at this point. Mm. Well, the two points here. That's one eye. Uh, but you have to remember that the other eye that looks like white has, oh, sorry about that. White has that eye, but white does not have an eye on this side because this is going to be a false eye. So white has one potential eye on the side. And, and white does have to be a bit careful, I guess, about that group. So white jumps out. I agree with that. And black is continuing to attack. So at this point, the game is centered on a kind of an attempted attack on White's group on the right side. And the left side, it's, it's okay. For the time being, uh, if Black plays something like this, White can always play an Atari here and cut Black off. And it's not really working for Black. That's so nice. Black jumps here. And White's still taking care of that group, it looks like it makes sense, you know? And at this point, now black is threatening A. So now if black plays at A, that's going to cut off white. 
like if white plays something like let's have white play something like that black could play here that would cut off the white stones yeah but this stone making making the connection and that would be trouble for white on both sides like th this group here uh it looks like black can um push around white on that side also so it's, that would be bad for white so white had to answer white did it this way now if black plays at a white can play at b wow i, I should probably clarify what happens here? It might look like black can connect on the on the second line. It, it does look like, yeah. Uh, there's there's a number of ways white can uh, kill that. Like, if white had enough <laughs> liberties on the outside, white could do it this way, and then cut here. But uh, when white is sort of limited in liberties on the outside, like in this case, uh, uh -huh. you might be a bit worried about these five stones here. Mm -hmm. So in this case, white could just do it this way. Sorry, this way. The iron pil pillar tested. Uh, the stone. Oh, pil right, right, right. Stone yeah, pillar is. Tested. Th th this is the one that AlphaGo, I thought AlphaGo missed it in the Lisa Delvin. Yeah, right? I yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's but so it, cool. it, it can read this out. So there's nothing there. So this move is making the cut, cutting move at B, and black is going to attack the white group. So we're coming to a final attack here. And you know, just looking at the, the flow of this game, I was thinking that uh, white must have an easy win. Like white seemed to control the game throughout, and all of the issues that black raised, white managed to handle them. So yeah. white should be winning. It's a very close game. I, I, it, it, I would be... Um, unsure of winning at this point. And wow. the whole white group there, it still is not alive. It still looks in danger. It, and you can see that black is trying to attack it. Well, because there's that, uh, uh, it's not, yeah, there it is, there it is. I was just gonna, I was just black gonna just cut it. Yeah, yeah, just cut it. I was just, I've, been, I've been, actually been worried about that cut for a long time. Okay, black cuts white off. We're all worried about this white group in the center of the board, right? Yeah, I am. Would you expect white to play from the other side at F12? Uh, here's the one thing that I have been looking at is that those black stones there, uh, once white gets out there, that does, I guess we're going to find out. I wonder if white can counterattack. You're talking about these stones, right? Yeah. And on the left, those stones are actually pretty weak. And playing from the opposite side at F12, that where white is just played, it's a very sharp move because black, white is getting something extra on the left. At the same time, black has no good way to connect up. Oh, wow. Oh, okay, this that is, was a forcing move. Yeah, this is getting really, it's, it's not clear who's attacking who. <laughs> Yeah, actually, Colossal Jaguar just said what I was thinking. He said, my brain just fried. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a, I thought I knew what was going on, and, and now... Yeah. Well, there's this cutting point at G11 that Black has to deal with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to and figure out you would the think sequence. That when, okay, let's take the mark off that. You would think that when White has played from what seems to be the wrong side, that you would think that Black has a way to deal with this, wouldn't you? I would. You would, right? So I don't, know what, it, I don't has, know what it is. <laughs> basically, black has two ways to try to connect up. Black could play this way, or black could play this way. And there's going to be issues with both. So for instance, I'll go through this one first. White just plays very simply like this. And this move is the test of here. Like if black pushes through, that means that white can cut here and black cannot save the one stone. So that would be, instantly it would be eyes for white. Like if black plays there, white just captures the whole deal. And that wow. would be. Okay. So black will probably just push through, but then white pushes through here. And you can see that white is still putting pressure on this black group on the left. And if black saves, let's erase that. Let's say if black saves this one stone, then what looks like white's gonna connect up. So like, for instance, this kind of thing would just be bad for black. It would make it so easy for white to connect up. Or maybe I should have played, played a more simple move like this. 
And you can see that black still, even at this point, black will have issues on the left. Black's group there is a bit vulnerable. So that's the idea behind this move. So actually in the game, black did not play that way. Black played this way. And white cannot push through at A. White cannot push through at A, but white can play from this side. And still black has issues. Yep, yep. I, I just trying to read that out real fast. That that looks like the move, doesn't it? Uh, real fast is probably not going to do it. Okay, so white, black connects. White plays the tar here. Um, so black is actually, this way of cutting is a good way for black to cut white off. Because if black does it this way, then black is not connected up yet. So like when white plays here, black still has to play at some point. For instance, black would have to play this extra stone. Ah. So it's much better. The game move is much better where black is already connected. Like if white plays, when white plays there, this is the game sequence. Black gets to squeeze. So this is safe for black. But of course, um, OK, they played this exchange. So black squeezes. Black's connected up now. But white's going to connect up too. And it's still not so clear. It doesn't look like it's connected up. But it's not. It was well, it's good enough because like push trying to cut white at this point is it still leaves a lot of weaknesses. Like black can still try to cut like this, but white's gonna because black can cut this way, for instance. Mm. But at the very least, white will have ways. For instance, uh, white has a potential to make just an eye there. So actually, that's not working. Wait a moment. I have to think about this now. Yeah, because there's a peep, right? I'm getting myself into trouble. Maybe white <laughs> just plays this one. Uh, you know, I'm actually not very sure what's going to happen. But it looks dangerous for black, too. It really. It really looks dangerous. Something like this. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, never mind. Okay, I yeah. got it. Right, 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 right. Well, at the very least, it looks like white probably is going to have options to make an eye here. Just because the black group has to has to deal with it too. It's really crazy fight, and black protected at this point. Oh, man, can you imagine trying to play this out in time trouble? It would just be... I would probably just die. <laughs> <laughs> so white is making an eye on the right side. And I, I, was just, I was just sort of, when I was looking around desperately for another, for an eye, I was thinking, yeah, how about that side? That that looks good. White has an eye. There. Actually, this is, um, yeah, well, it's going to be sort of like a sente eye, back covered on the side there. Oh, yes, right. that's right. It's a sente eye. That's right. Okay. At this point, white has an eye on the right and also is threatening to play at A. So, for instance, if black found some way to kill white in the center, let, let's just make a variation. Let's assume that black can kill white in the center with something like this. And white oh, will I, play here. I, I, I see what, yeah, I see where you're going with this. Here. Yep. Yep, yep. And then white will be Do, able to play yep, here. Yep, and then, yep. yep. And black's in trouble. So that's what white is threatening. There, there it is. There it is. I, it's, I, I actually saw that. That was very cool. So black plays. Uh, black played here anyway. Sorry about that. So that was the game move. And white started with this. So white's making a potential eye at A2. Um, but white could have actually. Okay, so the meaning of that was that white is trying to deal with this peep, maybe. Mm -hmm. No, that doesn't make sense. So this is, <laughs> it's alive, but it, um, white could have done it. I think white could have done it actually with, with this move. This looks like it's more profitable, actually. 
so, 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 so let's be clear here, if I understand this. This is actually not about the living and dying. It's a very close game. This is about points right now. Yes, exactly. It, it's going to be close. Um, it's going to go into an end game now, and it's going to be very close. So okay. um, some of these moves that I'm find, finding to be confusing probably have to do with the territory as much as they have to do with living and, and dying. Mm -hmm. We're actually entering a, a pretty normal endgame position. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I'll just uh, keep it relatively simple. There's one more position that I want to talk about, actually. So white is threatening that. Um, OK. And we're going to get a chance to see what happens. Actually, yeah. I. Um, I should revise what I was saying before to say that white's not going to attack black that way, but actually is going to do it this way. This is the safer way for white to threaten to cut. And if black answers here, then white can cut this way. Right. Because the issue with cutting that way was that black could uh, play here and start a call here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that's what I should have been talking about. So that, that sort of settles that problem a bit more cleanly. Oh, there we go. I see. Okay. And nice. so they're going to play an end game. So white doesn't really have the option to immediately connect on the side, but can, but did have a way to capture this stone right. in the process. Of, and that would make white alive. So that was just the, the choice of capturing this stone, maybe not as good as trying to capture this stone. So white was playing this move in the center, um, a, a similar value of towards the move itself. Mm. And they're just playing big points for a while. And white is alive on the side, with one eye in the center and one eye on the side. And it's a super close game. Yeah. And white plays here. White is threatening ABC. Black plays here. And so this is going to be a co. If white plays here and here, it's going to be a co. Mm. And if we look at co-threats, I don't know. There's um, White has started this, and White's going to lose the upper right corner. So that's pretty big. Wow. And so White cannot really afford to do that. Like, this co would be very dangerous for White. Uh, when this happens, for instance, let's have Black play. Where should Black play? Let's have Black play some forcing move. This, this should be big enough, for instance. And White plays. White doesn't have so many co-threats. Let's have white play a big move like this. There's a bonus for black because this white that, that white group is going to die too. <laughs> yeah. So that that's just not really an option for white. Black has a lead in co-threats, I think. Oh no. And so white wastes the co-threat. You know, that's just the way AlphaGo does it. Aye aye aye. And white's not going to go into this variation. It's just too dangerous. So white plays here, and we're back into the end game. And this is something like a 50-60 move end game at this point. And there's still some fairly big moves, like five or six point moves. Okay. It's really difficult. But I tried to make some variations. I tried to make a variation, I think, at this point. Let's see if I can find it. So yeah, so this is a big move. And the game black played here, and white played here. And so this was a big move. I tried to figure out what happens if black plays here. And so I made this little end game sequence. And I've stopped the variation here. It's really close. Um, mm. It's another half point difference. And it's, it's close enough for me, but it, I think white's going to win by half a point. OK. It's just very, very similar. To this the difference here and this is also a half point difference they're they're both still playing very big moves yeah and we're coming to an end here we're, we're getting rid of we're pretty much close to the end of the five six point moves like there's a big move in the upper left corner yeah that's it and i think that's the end of the big end game moves right. so we're in a, a small end game move 
But you know, with positions like this in the center of the board, it's it's sort of difficult to calculate the value of, for instance, a move like this. Is this one point or is this two points or, oh, or what? Like it, hell, it, I, it, I, no idea. Pros exactly. are usually pretty good at calculating um, end game moves on the side of the board. Sure, sure. Like um, obviously, this is this is a difference of two points. Usually, or th th moves like this. These are moves that we see all the time, and or this move like this is three and a third points or something like that. Three and a third points. There, there's a fraction there, but these are things that we're used to calculating. And like moves like this, this move or this move, we we could calculate that too. Mm, mm -hmm. And we we've, we've done it so many times that it's sort of hardwired, and we have the answer ready. But then with these positions in the center, we have to actually read it out. Right. It makes the game a bit more complicated. But it's very close. And, you know, uh, strictly speaking, this last move that Black played was a mistake. Because Black was, when Black plays here, it means that when we get into a, let, let's just take the game one move forward, uh, two moves forward. When Black does something like this at the end of the game, you can see that Black's going to have to deal with a snapback at the end. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Does something yeah. like this. Very, very it's annoying. Yeah. So it's better to have that stone just to go back to this move. Ah, better ow. to have that stone, although it might look a bit strange, it's better to have it here. And then there would be no snapback. So this is the kind of mistake that Alpha go does all the time. And... When I dig into it and try to find whether it was a losing mistake, I can never find it to be a losing mistake. It doesn't make right. any difference. Right, right. And so it's very annoying. <laughs> um, so here again, Black had a lot of options. Black could have started with this move and then connected. Black could have started with this move. Or was I just doing that? I was just doing that to show you, yeah. Yeah. So I, I made a variation for this move. And again, I think Black, um, Black lost by half a point. I couldn't find a way for Black to win this game. Wow. But every time, every time I thought I had a chance, it would be a half point. And again, you see, again, throwing away, throwing away a throw code threat with this move, it's really mm -hmm. bad. Like human professionals are very sensitive about that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Filling your own liberty and losing a potential code threat. When we know at this point of the game, we know that there's a, a lot of potential, for instance, if black plays this point, there's going to be a co in the upper right corner. Mm -hmm. There's other places in the board where we could easily have a co. Like if white plays, and let's just take the game one move forward. If white plays, if white plays here at some point, black is going to threaten the snapback maybe, or maybe not play that exchange, but basically it's a snapback position where they're going to eventually fight this co. There's so many points on the board where we have a co-pending, and Black throws away a co-threat like that. It's very shocking for a human professional. It's, it's just you wouldn't do it. It's just, it's, you, you wouldn't know, do it's, it. It's just and unprincipled. It's unprincipled, and it's really bad, because in this case, Black has also filled a liberty. Mm, mm. And so when White does something like this, um, and we get into this co, and it's, it's a bit far away, but let, let's just say, um, hypothetically, uh, we're, we're going to get into a, sorry, we're going to get into a call like this. Then eventually when white captures at this point, it's going to be an Atari. And that's because black played this stupid exchange. It's really bad. <laughs> Go ahead and say what you really think, Michael. But then, you know, when, when I get into it, and I study it the does, position. It just doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't make any difference. It's, it, right. you know, which, really is, which is even more annoying, right? It's more annoying. And <laughs> see, here you see, this is the game variation, and they are getting into this call. And it's a real possibility. Only White doesn't bother to do it, because White's winning by half a point anyway. <laughs> and at this point, Black resigned. I did at move 265, which is this move. I made a, a different variation, which I thought would be better. And this is going to be another half point. That does, a quarter does, of a stone. It doesn't make a difference though in the score. I think it made a difference probably in the Japanese rules. Because, yeah, in the Japanese rules, this is going to be one and a half points. 
right. but it's still sort of a stone in the Chinese rules or the the, the rules that AlphaGo uses. Yeah, yeah. Incredible calculation. Fun game. All mistakes, and when AlphaGo does it, it doesn't make any difference. I, I, well, that was a lot of fun, Michael, and it was also kind of fun. I know it was painful for you, but kind of fun to see you just sort of struggling. <laughs> with... Yeah, that fight in the center was. <laughs> I, I spent a lot of time studying it, and you know, Lila, Lila got confused too. Wow, really? and that's just because I, I think it's a difference in computing power. Uh, but like okay. when White was, um, let's see if I can get to the board position in this position. Um, there was a position here where Lila was not was not realizing the variation where White had potential to cut Black off, uh, okay. and was giving the wrong result to the and, and so the score was going up and down. Uh, where Lila was having trouble calculating that. It, it was just the computing power that I was using, I think. Sure, sure. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. Great game. Thank you. Uh, any last questions from folks uh, before we wrap up? Uh, we are going to uh, be continuing with these live streams. Again, you're going to want to keep track of that on usgo.org or even easier uh, just follow the uh, the Twitch channel here, and you'll get notifications. Uh, and sign up to my YouTube channel. Too. Yes, and sign up for Michael's YouTube channel. Going to be lots more cool stuff coming from there, uh, and we'll keep you posted on that uh, on uh, usgo.org as well. Um, and just a quick question, folks were asking this uh, who would come in uh, late. Um, so you you don't have any tournament games scheduled coming up, right? Because of what's going on. Well, I know my schedule um, two two weeks in advance. Okay. So, like today is a it's a weekend on okay. Friday. Uh, Thursdays are usually tournament games. Uh huh. So on the Friday, I usually get a notice for my um, my game two weeks in advance. Okay. So I know for certain that I don't have any games scheduled for the next two weeks. Uh -huh. And if if a um, state of emergency is declared. Um, in Tokyo or probably just Tokyo. I, I, I don't really know. Um, they're talking about the possibilities of having a state of emergency declared. Right. If that happens, it could be that games were postponed more. Right. But um, I think part of it is the fact that maybe the Nyonkin is trying to, was already trying to slow down tournaments because I haven't, I've only played one tournament game this year. Oh, wow. And frankly, I, I, um, had a very bad period at the end of last year. Uh -huh. where I lost a lot of games. So it's sort of explainable that um, coming into April with no games played is um, having a bad time at the end of last year doesn't, doesn't really explain that. Right. So I think they are postponing the games as much as they can without actually postponing the entire tournaments because these tournaments in Japan, they actually take a year and a half or something like that to go from the first, the lowest round to the championship match. So they do have a lot of leeway in scheduling them. And they were trying to make it easier for those of, those of us who were naturally worried about uh, mm -hmm. going out. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that is part of it. And now as things are getting worse in Tokyo, I think there could be something similar to uh, what other countries call a lockdown. Yeah. Um, I think the, the laws are probably slightly different, but it's going to be pretty similar, I think. Yeah, yeah, sheltering in place. Uh, and I would think, you know, frankly, we're having trouble here in the States. You know, again, I'm in the D.C. area and, you know, people are just doing stupid stuff, Michael. I mean, they're all having bonfire parties. I mean, they've had to actually threaten people with arrests. It's hard. I've been to Japan. It's very hard for me to imagine uh, folks there disobeying, you know, orders from the oh, government. No. Um, well, even I feel the stress um, from having to stay home. I oh, think yeah. it's very stressful for people. Um, and I think especially younger people have trouble mm. um, following mm. the rules, you might say. Okay. Or, and, you know, they had the same problems in China when they were having a lot of... That's they had right. trouble keeping... keeping um, there's a famous... A, a big a video that went viral of the police coming in and bashing a mahjong table because the people wouldn't stop playing mahjong. <laughs> 
I will. I will tell you the whole the whole um, story, you know. <laughs> so the, the, because they knew that the moment they went out, the people would come back and start playing mahjong again. So they, you know, so they destroyed the boards. <laughs> I, I will. I will tell you that uh, up until I guess uh, two weeks ago uh, was the last time. You know, I, I was still going out a week into. Well, they didn't have a lockdown two weeks ago, but me and my tennis buddies were going out and, and playing uh, two weeks ago. Uh, and then they locked up the tennis courts. So yeah. we, we knew it was serious at that point uh, when they when they locked up the tennis courts and, and, and bashed up the mahjong table. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, so that like... was sort of funny. I don't see that happening in Japan, but um, and I think people are becoming aware. Just looking at the world news, it's so obvious that um, this is something that's never happened to us. That's right. And, well, maybe if we went far enough back in history, like the black the plague. But, you know, no one has any experience like this. No. And, and you know, I mean, it is really, really serious. And, and as you mentioned, I mean, and it's interesting, you know, clearly, you know, we're we're a bit older. And so I think even more concerned. But I mean, around here, uh, we're getting stories of folks in their 30s and 40s who are catching COVID and dying. I, I, I work with, uh, you know, firefighters and so forth. And, and they've got cases because first responders are getting exposed. So. I think everybody needs to really, really be careful. Um, and, and again, you know, one of the great things about Go players is that we we can and do play online. So you know, plenty of social distancing there. Uh, and and we will continue. Uh, you know, folks were asking earlier. You know, we've we've got some more of the AlphaGo games to uh, to go, but. We might take a break, of course. You know, Michael's got some of his tournament games, and also, Michael, people were talking about this, and, and you would love to do it. We haven't done uh, we haven't done an ancient game for a while, a historic game. Maybe maybe we should uh, maybe we should take a little AlphaGo, you know, and throw in one of those. You know, some of those, um, you know, some of the games from. I mean, you've studied many many games. You're a big student of Go history, so. Uh, maybe what we'll do is uh, maybe next time up we'll give you a couple of options uh, like we did when we get, did the uh, the AlphaGo versus uh, Lisa Dahl and give you some choices about uh, which. Give me which, a choice. Yeah. 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 So we'll, we'll do that. So uh, anyway, uh, it's been wonderful as always hanging out with you, Michael. It takes my mind off of uh, all this awful stuff that's going on. And I, I hope that's uh, done that for, for all of you guys out there as well. Again, uh, check out Michael's new YouTube channel. Um, uh, it's it's uh, on usgo.org. We've got a link right to it. And uh, until next time, oh, oh, thanks, as always, to the American Go Association, usgo.org. Lots of cool stuff. And always, always thanks to our wonderful producer, uh, Babs Wana, keeping us on the air uh, and online. Thank you to that. And of course, thank you to Michael Redmond. Thanks yeah. so much, Michael. I said, All right. I, one final warning for people there will be Japanese language videos and English uh, language videos. So, right. yeah. So, if, if you uh, don't understand what I'm talking, maybe you're going to be in the Japanese video. So, so, just look for the English videos. There you go. All right, folks. See you next time.